As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on parts and tools I use in today's video. Today we are working on this beautiful 2012 Nissan Sentra. I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front pads and rotors first. We have 21 millimeter lug nuts. First you're going to want to go ahead and jack the car. Uh, always use a jack stand and then take off your 21 millimeter lug nuts. There's four of them. Take the wheel off. That little hubcap is going to come off too. And coming over here, we'll see where I jacked it up. That is where I have jacked the vehicle. A good place to put your jack stand would be right under here. Mine is invisible. And as you can see, I have my wheel off. And first thing we're going to do is it's a 14 millimeter right there. And as you can see, I've already taken that one out. And I'm going to demonstrate with my beautiful Milwaukee 3 8 ratchet. Uh, link below in the video description if you want one of these. It's going to make life faster and easier. Then we're going to go ahead. I like to just kind of pull it towards me. That compresses the piston a little bit. Makes it easier to take off. Now we're going to be looking at our pads. And... If they're not easy to pull out, you can always take a flathead screwdriver and stick it right in between there and then just kind of pry it out. But these, not so bad. I'm gonna leave my bracket in there. You can replace these brackets. A lot of times a new set will come with new brackets and that can make it quieter. You can see right there. Um, you can also just grease them and basically you just grab hold of it, pull it down, pop the new one back in there the same way you saw the old one but I'm not gonna mess with that I'm going to now show you we have a 19 here and a 19 here now used to I'd tell you all about turning the rotors forget turning rotors <laughs> um, they're so affordable link below in the video description for pad and rotor set that if you do not know if they have been replaced before go ahead and replace them this is the new fixed book philosophy replace them if you don't know if you did your brakes last time and replaced them i'd say you can go one brake job without replacing rotors so first one new rotors second one pad slap third one new rotors and so on that's what i do with your rotors but we're gonna go ahead and take this 19 off give me a moment to get my socket and we're gonna take look i want y'all to see just how powerful this little ratchet is Whoa! Did y'all see that? <laughs> Came right, just broke it right loose. You're gonna do that. And you're gonna do that. Obviously, I've already broke these loose. Ah. So, this one's gonna need a little extra encouragement. Mine were actually very difficult um, to break these loose. I used this ratchet right here. As you can see, it's a long ratchet. For the bottom one, I had it just sitting on there like that. And while it was sitting there, Bam, bam, I was able to break it loose that way. And the other side, you're not gonna be hitting down on it, you're gonna be pulling up on it. I did just pull really hard and was able to get it up. You can also put a bar, like see on the end of my jack there, put that on the end of your ratchet and pop it up. That makes it easier, extra leverage. But anyways, once you do that, we will get this bracket off. Just a couple more turns. This Milwaukee ratchet does like 35 foot pounds, so you can see this bolt has still got. Still had over 35 foot pounds of resistance. So now we've got our bracket off. I'm just gonna take this rotor. And these were really nice to me as far as just coming right off. Set them down. Um, if it is not that easy, this one does not have holes. Um, sometimes they have two bolt holes. It'll allow you to run two bolts in there and it kind of presses it off. Um, what I do is you take a big hammer, like this four pound hammer, and you're gonna beat there, 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 there. And as my college instructors used to say, beat it like your girlfriend is watching. <laughs> um, so just put a lot of oomph into it and that'll break it up. What happens is rust gets around these guys right here and it doesn't want to come off it wants to just kind of sit on this hub so by hitting it there and there you'll break it loose take your rotor off then we got our new rotor sitting over here i've already cleaned this basically 
get you some brake cleaner. It's just regular brake cleaner from the parts store. There'll be some in the video description below. Paper towel, just wipe the grease because the manufacturer of this rotor, they always put grease on them just to kind of keep them from rusting in storage or whatever. And you need to rub that off because it's gonna make more smell and it's just, I don't know, it's probably not good for the, the brake material. But anyways, go ahead, oh, slip it up on there like so. We're gonna put our bracket back on. Uh, everything pretty much goes on the way you saw me take it off. The exception of things you need to know is these slide pins. These actually slide really nicely. What you're gonna wanna do is, sorry, I know y'all can't see anything. Give me just a minute. Boom, I pulled it out with two hands. Now, take some new brake grease and apply it on there and then just stick it back in, just pop it back in. So do that for both slide pins. And then you're not gonna be able to put your caliper over your new pads, what you have to do is, when I see my C-clamp, see it, haha, -ha, right here. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at my own jokes. This C-clamp, okay? You take an old pad, and you're gonna set your old pad right up here, and then you're gonna take your C-clamp right here, twist it in slowly, compress that piston all the way back until it's flush, and then check it out, your new caliper, well, your old used whatever the caliper you had will fit right up over those new pads and then just make sure you snug everything down good and tight and that is it guys put your wheel back on always make sure i use let's see i use this milwaukee uh, gun link below in the video description this thing is amazing it's like 1100 foot pounds coming off it's like the new updated uh generation or whatever but even with this I bump them once, I go boom, 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 until it just hits it once. I don't sit there and go brr, but I bump them once and then I come back with a breaker bar in this socket and then I just snug them and that, I mean, you guys may not know what it feels like, but just snug it with a big breaker bar and that should be about 80 foot pounds. So not, you can get you a torque wrench. Um, nobody, no mechanics really use torque wrenches. I know the dealership they wanted us to, but nobody did. So anyways, that is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay guys, this is my shameless continuation of talking for a minute and 16 seconds because we all know YouTube loves a 10 minute video, but it's not gonna be wasted. Why would you need brakes? Why do you need brake pads? Why do you need new rotors? Well, let's talk about it. Some of the symptoms that you will experience with bad pads, um, usually a high pitched squeal. The manufacturer actually thinks about this and instead of having to replace rotors every time they put this little wear indicator on there right it's going to make contact with the rotor and that is going to make a high pitch squeal now once you're past that or let's say you don't have a wear indicator it's going to go metal to metal and that's where you're going to hear a grinding or a roar um, then you know hey I'm definitely going to need new rotors as well another thing you can experience so while you're driving down the road, you can feel vibration when you apply the brakes. Um, at high speeds, it's gonna be a fast vibration. At low speeds, it's gonna be a slower vibration. If you're experiencing vibration all the time when you're not hitting the brakes, it's most likely something else and not actually your brakes. So we're at one minute and 10 seconds. I just got six more seconds to go, guys. <laughs> Thank you for enduring this. If you watched it all the way through, see you next time. One more thing, guys. <laughs> My math was off <laughs> uh, for 10 minutes. Okay, so why is my jack stand invisible? I'll tell you why it's invisible because I am in the business of fixing people's cars fast. Now, some of you in the comments will love to tell me that this is unsafe. Guess what? If, and they say jacks, it's not, you wanna assume it's not when, it's not if, but when they fail or whatever, right? Whenever I get underneath a car, I do, I lay it down onto a jack stand and I get really safe with it and then I also use the jack as a secondary stand. Um, when I do jobs like this, I don't really get up under there in such a way to where it would be bad if it did fail on me. So I just wanna do it more quickly and this is the quickest way I do it. So if you don't like it, <laughs> don't worry about it, it's okay. Um, I would always recommend, you know, use a jack stand cause I don't wanna tell you to not use one and then you don't use it and then somebody gets hurt. So that's why it's invisible. All right, bye guys.